Hey geeks, if you're someone like me who absolutely loves movies, then more than likely you want to make digital backups or archives of all the discs that you own, or you might want to use it in a media server like what I have here with Jellyfin with all the movies that I own. But the problem is with these movies, they typically take up a lot of space. For example, a normal standard Blu-ray takes up anywhere from 25 to 35 gigs usually, but if you have something like this, which is a 4K Ultra, these could take up 50 to even 100 gigs of space. And as anybody knows, space costs a lot of money. And so today I'm going to be showing you a way that you could actually reduce the amount of space that these digital movies take or any other type of physical media that you make backups on. So let's first start off with how I actually make digital backups of my media. So the main software that I use is Make MKV. This allows me to rip the Blu-ray or DVDs. And then once that's done, I use it in my Jellyfin media server. This is really awesome because it's basically like having your own Netflix. But the thing is, these do take up space. Uh, Happy Gilmore is a smaller movie, meaning it doesn't take up as much space. So in this case, this movie takes up 17.5 gigs. But most of the movies that I actually rip take up anywhere from 25 to 35 gigs. And so how do you actually reduce the space that these movies take up? Well, you can use a piece of software called Handbrake. Handbrake is an open source video transcoder. It's been around for a very long time and it is available on all platforms, Windows, Mac, and Linux. I myself use Linux Mint. And so this is something that is freely available in my software manager. So in this case, I have it available here. You can install it regularly or you can use FlatHub, which is what I'm using. And once it's installed, this is what you have. And regardless of which platform you use, it's pretty much the same user interface. And so let me show you the super easy settings that I use to allow me to not only get smaller file sizes, but also maintain really great quality. Now, whenever you're using Handbrake for the first time, there are a wide number of presets that you could choose. And the default is typically fast 1080p 30. And within this, you're gonna see multiple tabs with different settings. And in this case, you can change these settings. And most importantly, you could save this as a preset. So you could name it something else or you can even overwrite the original so all you have to do is name it something else here you could put a description if you want and so that's what i did with a preset that i already have and so if i go to my presets i go down to the bottom this is where the custom uh, presets are and so i already have one called movie compression and so whenever you see these settings you could do the same thing and then save it as a preset with whatever name that you want now let's go ahead and go over the settings that I changed. And so the first tab is summary. I just left this alone. Dimensions, I'm doing 1080p, but if your original media was actually 2K or 4K, you can adjust that as needed. And then for my filters, I've just left this alone. And this next tab video, I would say is the most important part. And so the first thing is the video encoder. So by default, it's going to use a software encoder. In this case, I'm using H.264, X.264. And within Linux Mint, by default, I'm not able to use the hardware encoders. For example, if you have a GPU or iGPU, you can use the hardware encoding. And typically, that is going to be better. But at least on my computer in Linux Mint, I'm currently only able to use the software encoder. And it does a pretty good job. But if you're using something like Microsoft Windows or Mac, then you should be able to use your hardware encoders by default. And this next part is pretty important because this determines the overall quality that you have. So in this case, for this number right here, the smaller the number, the better the quality. And so if you move this slider to the right, the number lessens, but the quality will increase. But that also means the overall size of your file will increase as well. And what I found is this overall number of 24 does a really great job. And you could play around with this, but this is what I found. And also for your quality, there's content quality and there's also bit rate. I highly recommend it just leave it at constant quality. I've tried the bitrate thing, but honestly, it's just a lot easier to use constant quality. And next up, we have frame rate. Now, there are a number of options here you could choose for frame rates, but I would say just do same as source. Then you don't have to think about it. And then below that is constant frame rate or variable frame rate. 
similar to the quality, I'll go ahead and choose constant frame rate. And then below that, there are other settings here. There's some presets for multi-pass encoding, which I do recommend that you check. And then here, depending upon the overall quality that you want, if you make it faster, typically the quality is not going to be as good. If you do it slower, it will be better, but it takes longer. So for me, I just have it at fast and you could change this if you want. So if you go to the far right, it's slower, but your quality will be better. But I've noticed that there's really not a big difference. So I just go ahead and leave it at fast. So that way I don't have to wait a long time to get encoded. And at the same time, the encoding looks really good. And then here under tune, there are a number of options. I just leave it at none and choose fast decode. And for my profile, I've set that as auto level as auto as well and there's many different ways that you could do this but this is what i found that's worked well and then for audio there's also many other options here uh, but for me i just kind of leave things alone you could come and adjust this if you want but from my experience it doesn't make too much of a difference unless you have a really great sound system and you want to get the best audio quality possible and in that case you're definitely going to need to take more time to adjust things there and then for subtitles i just like left this alone uh, chapters i left that alone and tags i didn't put anything there and so the main part where i'm making changes is under video. And I think for the vast majority of people out there, if you use these similar settings, you're gonna get great quality, fast speed, and smaller file sizes. And once you have all those settings in place, now you could actually do the transcoding. So in this case, I'm gonna go file, open source, and then I'm gonna go to the folder where I have my original. So here is the Happy Gilmore original file. I'm gonna say open. And then you're going to choose the directory that you want it to go into. So in this case, I do have a directory available for all my handbrake media. So I'm going to save it right here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a folder for my movie. So we'll say create here. Okay, I'm going to select it. And here you could actually change the name if you want. I'm going to change this up just a little bit. All right, so now we are ready to go, and all I have to do is press start. And Handbrake's gonna start encoding, and it tells you how long it's gonna take. So once this is done, we'll go ahead and compare the size, and I'm also gonna show you the overall quality as well. Okay, and so the transfer is done, and let's go ahead and check this out. So here's the original. I'm gonna show you the original file size. 17.5 gigs and here's the new version uh, through handbrake we look here let's look at the properties this one is 3.4 gigs and so that is i would say almost five times less yeah four to five times less so yeah 17.5 versus 3.4 that is a huge savings and then let's go ahead and look at the quality. So here's the original. I'm going to show you really quick. And you might not be able to tell unless, you know, you had a big screen or something. So this is the original uh, file that I had, the 17.5 gigs. And a lot of this does depend on the original and also how it's been mastered. But I think this looks really great. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the new one or the new smaller version. And we're just going to like scrub around here. And to me, that still looks really great overall. And there are some things you could do, you know, if you feel like it's not as good a quality, you could always go ahead and play around with the settings. But at least for me, as a backup with a smaller version, um, I don't see a dramatic difference in terms of quality. Um, although the original does look better, it does look sharper. It's not so much so that I would say this is bad quality. I think this is still really great especially the huge savings that you have in terms of file size. And so that is my easy handbrake settings for you to get really great quality, but still having much, much smaller file sizes. So if you actually had any thoughts on this or any other ways in which you do this, be sure to leave in the comments area below and I'll see you on another episode. Hey geeks, if you are a brand new creator and you simply want something easy to get you started, well, I got something for you with my Creator Starter Kit. This is a super simple step-by-step -step guide that's gonna take you from having no channel to developing your very first YouTube channel along with ideas, 
thumbnail designs, and other creator tips, including marketing. And the best part is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and get started creating.